Whether you call it Kveik, Kvik, or Kvike, there's no denying that this unique Norwegian yeast has had a remarkable impact on the brewing scene, and Imperial Yeast's A43 Loki is one of the best versions out there. With the ability to produce a clean beer when fermented as warm as 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, you heard that right. While also performing well at more standard ale temperatures, Imperial Yeast A43 Loki is as versatile as it gets, meaning you have zero excuses for failing to brew throughout the year. Learn more about A43 Loki at imperialyeast.com and grab a pouch for your next batch to see what all the fuss is about. It's true that in order for beer to be beer, it has to be made with four ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. However, while this may be the overriding rule, brewers have been bucking convention by using various other ingredients to make uh, their, their beer for centuries. The general goal being to impart unique characteristics that you can't otherwise get by going the standard route. You're listening to the Brewlosophy Podcast. I'm your host, Marshall Schott, and joining me on this episode to discuss the use of spruce tips in brewing is contributor Steve Thanos. Hey, Marshall. Yeah, spruce tips are uh, an interesting ingredient to um, make make beer and kind of put it at another level. Um, never have account- encountered an ingredient that works so well with both hops and the yeast. Um, and I've been a big fan of spruce tips uh, for quite a while now. So it'll be interesting to talk about it. Yeah, you are the spruce tip guy uh, with Brewlosophy. That is for sure. I know that you. I think you're the only one who's brewed with spruce tips. Maybe, uh, maybe some of the other guys so. <laughs> have played with it. Uh, and I think it's a wildly misunderstood ingredient. When I first heard of people using spruce tips to make beer, I immediately cringed, as I presumed uh, they'd impart like an unpleasant, sappy, pine-like note to beer. I've since learned that that at least when used properly, that that's not the case at all. And given your experience brewing with spruce tips, Steve, I look forward to learning something new today. All right, if you're a fan of this show and you'd like to receive a reward for your support, consider becoming one a patron over at patreon.com slash brewlosophy by making a small monthly pledge. You'll receive rewards like access to unpublished contributor recipes, unique discounts at yakimavalleyhops.com, and an invitation to a monthly live Q&A session with somebody in the brewing world. Our guest for January of 2023 is the 2022 Oregon State Home Brewer of the Year, Jordan Folks, who also happens to be the newest addition to the Brewlosophy crew, which we're absolutely excited about. Jordan has a ton of experience homebrewing, and unlike some Brewlosophy contributors, tends to prefer more traditional brewing methods, which considering how incredibly well he does in competition, really does say something. Uh, you may be familiar with Jordan's voice as he co-hosts every 10th episode of the Brew Lab with Kate Job as well. Uh, if you enjoy picking the brains of smart brewers, this is the session for you. To be a part of it, you have to make your pledge of just $3 or more over at patreon.com slash brewlosophy. By Friday, January 20th, as Jordan Jordan's going to be taking questions that Saturday, the 21st. All past sessions are available on our private Patreon and Facebook pages, so you can go back and watch them whenever you like. Learn more about all of the neat rewards we offer in exchange for your support over at patreon.com slash brewlosophy. And if you wouldn't mind letting us know what you think about this show by leaving a rating and review an Apple podcast or wherever it is you listen to podcasts that allows you to leave ratings and reviews, we really would appreciate it uh, as those reviews help those who haven't heard of us uh, yet to more easily find the show. Plus, we like knowing what you think. All right, feedback is brought to you by Clawhammer Supply, who in addition to having a remarkable YouTube channel chock full of great brewing-related content, sell what we believe to be some of the best electric brewing systems on the market. If you've been considering making the move from propane to electric, you owe it to yourself to check out Clawhammer Supply. Whether you're after a 120-volt, 5-gallon unit or something bigger like their powerful 240-volt, 10-gallon system, Clawhammer has got you covered. Learn more about everything they have to offer over at clawhammersupply.com and don't forget to check out their YouTube channel as well. Listener Evan Kuhn had some feedback after listening to episode 257 where we talked about brewing with coffee. Evan said, I enjoyed this one, lads. (laughs) It was funny listening as Andy clearly takes his coffee more seriously than Marshall. The mention of going to Starbucks made me shudder as an Australian. (laughs) Um, You know, I I actually have to side with Andy here. Um, Before (laughs) I started teaching, I was actually a barista and then a shift... um, supervisor uh, at starbucks so uh, my coffee roots are are grounded no pun, no pun intended in starbucks and um i i grab their coffee 
whenever I get a chance to. <laughs> so I I love coffee, but I love it because it has caffeine. And I, I, I will admit, I mean, I drink Miller Lite and I still love craft beer. I like really good coffee, but I'm perfectly fine with Starbucks. But here's the deal, Evan. Uh, you're right. A- Andy absolutely takes his coffee more seriously than I do. Uh, and while I refrain from you know I'll, like admitting that I drink Folgers every single morning, my mention of Starbucks was in relation to the fact that my wife and daughters enjoy their sweet holiday drinks. You know, so personally, I think Starbucks coffee tastes a little too burnt. Uh, but in the same way, I, again, I, I don't care if people you know drink big beer. I couldn't care less where people choose to get their coffee. So that's just me, Evan. But uh, thanks for the feedback, buddy. If you have show feedback, you could send it to feedback at brewlosophy.com or drop us a note on social media. All right. If you haven't already, go subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, uh, which you can find at youtube.com slash at the brewlosophy show. That's YouTube dot com slash the at symbol followed uh, by the brewlosophy with a regular you not an umlaut show all right when we're back from this break our focus will be on brewing with spruce tips Chilling work can be a chore, especially after a long brew day, but not with the Exchillerator Counterflow Chiller, which can chill a 5-gallon or 19-liter batch of wort in 5 minutes or less, leading to a strong cold break and clearer wort in the fermenter. Brewlosophy's Matt Del Fiaco uses the Exchillerator Max and absolutely loves it. In addition to improved chilling efficiency, every Exchillerator comes with a 5-year warranty that covers the entire chiller for manufacturer defects. If you're looking to up your chilling game and a CFC is right for you, head over to Exchillerator.com today. There's no denying that stainless steel is the best material for brewing equipment, and Delta Brewing Systems offers some of the lowest prices on high-quality stainless gear, like the Firm Tank, which in addition to holding 8 gallons or 30 liters of work, comes with a domed lid to even further reduce the chances of a messy blow-off. Plus, it can hold up to 4 PSI of pressure for closed transfers. Delta Brewing Systems also has their own line of brew kettles as well as one of the lowest-priced all-in-one electric brewing systems out there, and their prices are shockingly low. If you're in the market for legit stainless gear that won't break the bank, Do yourself a favor and head over to DeltaBrewingSystems.com today. These days, hops are viewed as the essential brewing spice, contributing not only bitterness, but a variety of desirable characteristics, uh, ranging from earthy and woody to floral and fruity. However, in less modern times, it wasn't uncommon to rely on other ingredients to impart unique flavors to beer, one of which grows on trees. Now, I have to admit that I've never used spruce tips in my brewing before, and I've only sampled a handful of spruce tip beers, but such is not the case for you, Steve. So I'm looking forward to you being, uh, to kind of being your student today. Uh, Why don't we start off by talking a little bit about what exactly spruce tips are? So basically the spruce tip can be found on, of course, spruce trees. And there's a whole long list of spruce trees uh, that I won't even name, but there's a ton of them out there. Um, And basically during the season of uh, right around springtime, um, these spruce tips appear on the spruce tree. And they're usually like a lighter greenish color uh, with sometimes maybe like a a brownish, um, I want to say husk almost. Um, And I've, after doing some research uh, when I was finally able to pick some myself uh, not too long ago, um, I've learned that you take the brown tips off or brown husk off of the spruce tip. Uh, And then I just chucked them into a bucket and um, went home. It was... um, you know, a first for me, uh, harvesting my own spruce tips, but that's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. And, and so I have a redwood tree in my back. I actually have two redwood trees in my backyard, very common where I live over here in Fresno. And every year they grow, they have these really light green. They're kind of pretty looking actually, uh, these really light green tips on them. Are those, I, I don't even know if redwood is a, is a type of a spruce tree, but uh, like, could I go pick those and, and brew with them? I mean, I know I could, but like, is that is that a spruce tip or? Um, I don't know. I would have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, I I know they call it redwood because of the color of the of the tree, the tree bark and the wood. Uh, but I I do I'm 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 they look exactly like what what I've seen pictures of spruce tips. So I'll have to look into that as well. Yeah, and shoot, man. Yeah, it, you know that that'd be kind of cool too. Is if if those were the types of spruce tips that people can use, that people brew with, shoot, I might have to brew up a batch myself using those just for fun, like foraged from my own backyard right above my pool or something. There you go. <laughs> so you said harvest time though is around springtime, right? 
Yeah, right around springtime. Um, I, I around here. I think I last year it was around April or May. It was still okay. kind of cold out, but I, I went out on a, a Saturday afternoon. Um, there's a, a business in the next town over uh, that wasn't too busy, and I parked my car and brought my bucket with me and started grabbing some spruce tips. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. It's like just it, it, when, when ingredients are just right out there for the taking, I think is really yeah. neat. Um, let's talk a little bit about historical usage of spruce tips. I did a little bit of research, but I'm by no means an expert on this. My understanding is that there's documentation, at least, that spruce tips were used, I mean, as far back as the 16th century, uh, as yeah. almost for like medicinal purposes that, you know, back when we our understanding of medicine wasn't very good. But uh, it was introduced to European armies as a treatment for scurvy because apparently it's fairly high in vitamin C. That's exactly what I found, um, and I can kind of was wondering, you know, is the vitamin C the um, reason for the citrus notes that we get from from um, spruce tips? I I don't know. I'm not an expert uh, um, by any means on this, but. Um, it's something to think about at least. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that it, that there's that these spruce tips were just being used so long ago. Now, obviously, that wasn't in beer. Uh, by the mid 18th century, however, there's documentation uh, that seems to suggest that it, it started to kind of make its way into fermented beverages again as a as a. Uh, I think even back then, fermented beverages were viewed as like tonics, right? Like you could drink them for right. health. And <laughs> I mean, at the very least, they kept people in their heads, kept them warmer and, and make them feel better when, you know, times weren't so good. Exactly. Uh, but, but that's a lot. That's a pretty long history uh, of oh, use yeah. in beer. And uh, I, I was I was kind of looking up like old school, you know, recipes and stuff. And and uh, there's one I found online where it mentions that to use just the tops and branches of the spruce tree. Uh, but I but I have to you know, you th- I think back to things like uh, farmhouse ale uh, and the traditional way of making those where they put down. Um, you know, like pine tree branches and they use that to louder, right? And I right. was what I, I wonder to what extent that, I mean, obviously is going to impact the flavor of the beer. You know, if that was also kind of a, a, you know, you're you're pulling some of that spruce characteristics into the beer and maybe they're like, well, these this fresh growth has a, a different characteristic to it, a different flavor than say, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the the old, you know, that dark green, you know, hardy uh, uh, spruce branches and stuff. I don't know, really interesting. I would... I would wonder how um, potent the darker parts would be, seeing that that is that's grown already and it's kind of established. Yeah. Um, as opposed to the fresh stuff that grows from the t- on the tip of the um, of the um, tree. Um, so I'm wondering if that's more potent, like you said. Oh, I would imagine. That, I mean, if you so again, I don't know if the redwood trees that I have when they grow their their tips, if they can be used in brewing, but. When I've gone out and pulled those off and rubbed them in my fingers, they smell Mm -hmm. vastly different. Uh, Oh, yeah. Like you said, they have almost this like candied citrus aroma to them. Isn't Um, it great? It's so weird. Yeah. And I would never (laughs) – I've I've got a story. Ray found went up to Alaska a few years ago uh, back when he was contributing to Brewlosophy. And he he initially had a similar perspective of spruce tips as I did. Like, gross. Who wants to have – you know, a sappy pine flavored beer. And he went, I think he went to Alaskan brewing company and they had Mm -hmm. some freshly picked spruce tips and we're, we're like giving them out to people to like eat, to like try them. And he was, yeah, he, he messages me and he's like, dude, these don't taste like a, a Christmas tree. They taste like candied citrus with a little bit of pine, but they're really quite pleasant. And that kind of changed his perspective on them. I've yet to experience that, and I'm not going to eat spruce tips off my tree yet. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I'm like but, chewing yeah. on spruce tips, but I could see how it would work well in beer, though. For sure, for sure. I mean, historically speaking, it's been around even longer than we really know. Um, um, J- Captain James Cook, who was a British explorer, um, and was the one who, when him and his crew. Um, uh, were, had a lot of work out in uh, New Zealand, and it reportedly he was brewing beers on his ship with his crew uh, in the late 1770s uh, or early 1770s, mid 1770s, um, where you know he was using spruce tips. Um, so, 
you know, you, you know, it's out there. Uh, people have been using it. I think it's just a matter of you know who who knows about it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then, even historically speaking, um, there's a book out called um, "Beer in America: The Early Years," uh-huh. um, and by Greg Smith, Greg with two G's, and he includes a recipe from Ben Franklin, who was brewing beer back back when he was in. Uh, um, in 1783. So, yeah, crazy to, to think that you know it, it's uh, it's out there. Yeah, Ben Franklin and I would have been homies, man. Brewing Definitely. beer w- way back, <laughs> way back then. He's like, God, we for got sure. so good to drink. Uh, that's like the whole whole thing too, where it's like beer is safer for you than the water at times, you know. So, it, it, and that was noted too, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think I ran across that Ben Franklin recipe. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, we've learned things over time. Uh, we've learned how to use spruce tips such that they don't impart flavors that aren't. Uh, very pleasant, and like you said, I, 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 in my research, I found as well that you do want to get rid of that brown. Uh, ch- I think they call it chaff or something like that. You want that off right. of the spruce tips, right? Because that will impart like uh, a branchy kind of bitterness, uh, you know, woody flavors that are not very pleasant. Um, so you really are just going for that soft, light green uh, spruce tip piece without anything else on there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as soon as I plucked mine off, uh, like I said, I threw them in a bucket, came home, um, rinsed everything off really good, and then just started to um, put them into Ziploc bags and chucked them in a the freezer just like hops. That's so cool. And and yeah. uh, so and now if you can't go harvest your own, you can purchase spruce tips online, right? You can. Um, so it's in, ironic that you mentioned um, how Ray first acquired some um that's how actually i found out about spruce tips because alaskan brewing company put out something on facebook years ago um this is like way before the pandemic hit and they were um talking about you know we're, we'll send you some um spruce tips brew with it send us beer back for a competition so oh yeah i, I yeah. did i did everything um and like many times i had the beer, um, and I didn't pull a Ray, but I did. I didn't. Um, I didn't send the beer in uh, for whatever reason. I got lazy or whatever. It ended up being a really good beer, um, and I, I wish I would have entered the competition, but I didn't. So. Say la vie. Yeah, say la vie. Alaskan is kind of known for for brew, I think they have spruce tip beers that they that they make, right? They do. Yeah. Yes, they do. They do. Um, and then just before the pandemic hit, um, they sent out another message. I received some more um, interesting story with that. I didn't think that I um, submitted my request online correctly, so I messaged them, and then they they ended up sending me two packages of spruce tips nice so for the longest time i had a ton of spruce tips in my freezer which i was not complaining about yeah yeah that's that's really interesting so let's let's kind of get into talking about uh brewing with spruce tips and and your experience doing that again i've never done it so i'm you you already mentioned you you'd kind of treat them the same way you do hops but i'd be interested to hear like when you're designing a recipe where you're going to be using spruce tips what your thought process is how much you use where you add them stuff like that yeah, I I, I kind of use it uh, just like hops in the sense that um, I'm still very conscious of being heavy-handed and, and not wanting to add too much. Yeah, uh, because I don't want it to be um, one-sided. Uh, but at the same time, um, conversely with the hops, I'm not going to use something like say a citra hop, which I, I love citra hops. I know you love them too, uh, but citra can be very dominant in a beer yes and you like you you pour it you drink it and you know you have citra hops so i kind of stay away from from something like that um but then i usually will use something like centennial or cascade to kind of um back up what i'm getting from the spruce tips with the pine and the citrus uh maybe bitter with um some chinook or simcoe uh just to kind of balance everything out um, and it just it makes for a wonderful beer. So, but but when you say like Chinook, Simcoe, stuff like that, I I do think of uh, those hops do tend to impart a 
I don't, I don't want to use this word loosely on this episode in particular, but kind of a piney characteristic already. So are you doing that to kind of pair with it, to it complements the pine notes from the spruce tips, or are you doing it because of the non-piney characteristics those, those uh, hops tend to impart to beer? It's an interesting question. Um, I've always thought of it as a compliment, but I wonder if I were to maybe get something not so piney as a bittering hop, um, would it then showcase the the spruce tips more? Huh. Yeah, that's interesting idea. It's interesting. I, I'm just curious. It, like, like, could you theoretically? I keep saying could. You could do whatever you want. We are homebrewers. We could do whatever we want. <laughs> but like, could, could spruce tips be used on their own without hops at all and to, to impart bitterness, flavor, aroma, all that kind of stuff? Or is it something where you, do you feel like you kind of need hops to balance out the, the sprucey character, I guess? Well, I think I know what I'm brewing soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good brew it yourself, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I... I I mean, everything points to it being it working, right? Um, and I would think that it would it would be maybe something like in a pale ale where you're not going to be using um, a whole ton of of, of spruce tips, um, depending on how many you have on on hand, of course. Yeah. Um, I usually go with like to kind of circle back to your original question. I usually go with like an ounce of spruce tips four or five gallon batch okay um and i know there's been pe- people who have commented and saying oh you know you should add more and um I, I i tend to shy away from adding more because of the fact that i don't want to overpower the beer i want it to be balanced and i want some of those hops to show as well right um but yeah i, I wonder what is more dominant the spruce tip itself or the um the hops and the spruce tips kind of playing in unisons with each other. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense to me because there, you, you are going to pull some bitterness out. Now, obviously it's, I don't think there are alpha acids that get isomerized in spruce tips. So the bitterness would have, again, theoretically it would have a different quality to it than, right. You know, isomerized alpha acids, but, but what, a, I mean, I, I agree. Maybe, maybe like a, uh, like a one gallon batch just so you don't waste too much beer if it turns out horrible, <laughs> but like <laughs> a blonde ale that is just that ju- is made with just spruce tips. I'd be so interested to hear how that turns out. I, yeah. I have to imagine though, that like you, you kind of alluded to earlier that there is a point to where you can overdo it and, and that you probably yeah. get past the, I want to hear a, your breakdown of, of what, what you get from spruce tips, you know, when you brew with them anyways, but where you get past the good stuff and it just t- starts to taste like a Christmas tree. Um, yeah, I've never gotten to that point with, with the beers that I've brewed. Um, and it sounds very elitist and as if I, you know, my beer is so good. That's not <laughs> the case at all. Um, you know me, I'm, I'm humble as hell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, 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 it I don't know. There, there's just like this. Like we mentioned it before, this sweetness that comes from it um, that I get from certain hops as well. Cascade and Centennial being some, and then even Azaka and Eldorado, um, which I've never brewed with with spruce tips. But uh, there's this sweetness that I get from those hops um, that I also get from spruce tips. So it's an interesting, interesting idea that um, that flavor kind of comes out as a sweetness. Yeah, it, it, the 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 sweetness thing is what I've heard from other people who have that Ray. That's one of the things Ray commented on. That was kind of yeah. like that's why I think he referred to it as like candied citrus. It's definitely um, there. Yeah, it's like as if you took like a a grapefruit or an orange rind and you you um, coated it with sugar and then put it in the oven and then kind of let it let it do its thing a little bit and then take it out and eat it. Um, that's what I imagine that tastes like. Uh, that is such a weird way for me to think about something that comes off of a spruce tree. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I know. My, it's my brain cannot <laughs> process that, that, and it's weird because I'm so, I like to experiment. I like to have fun and stuff, but I really do not like, I love the smell of, of Christmas trees. I love the smell of camping and, and where we live again, there are tons of spruce, tons of redwood, all that stuff. Yeah. The thought of that in a beer, I mean, it's just so weird to me. And the fact that that something that can come off of that tree does not, uh, at least when used properly, that I hear, that doesn't taste like that, that it actually imparts this 
interestingly like candied sweet citrus thing is just yeah. it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around but i trust people like you steve who who brew with spruce tips often uh and i it's it's making me want to try it out with the stuff in my backyard and i am you know just talking with you today is is, is inspiring me to do that even more <laughs> right on that's what that's what this great hobby allows us to do right yeah exactly so so in th- I know that you have not used spruce tips in every style, but I would like to talk about some of your thoughts on even styles that maybe you haven't used them in. When I first started hearing about spruce tip beers, a couple of things came to mind. One, I thought of like a nice, even like spiced beer big high ABV brown ale or something like that, that it would work well with that. But then I also, I kind of had this idea that probably Saison, farmhouse ale, stuff like that, that it would work well there. But hearing that people are using it in like IPA and pale ale, again, that just seemed off to me. What are your thoughts, stylistically speaking, on uh, where spruce tips fit in? It sounds like it's pretty broad. Uh, Yeah, it is pretty broad in my mind, at least. Um, When I first started brewing with spruce tips it american ipa was the one style that i always gravitated towards um and i've always had this kind of this romantic notion that um a a big barley wine would really do well with spruce tips um and kind of just add that that you talked about it before with um your um tiny bottoms pale ale that like how about mid palate um 30 minute edition or whatever of 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 a of hop that kind of adds a little something interesting uh, i think that would work really well with a barley wine um i've thought of the brown ale before because of the earthiness uh that kind of would cut through uh with the pine and Saison, that's an interesting one. Um, the hoppy saisons are pretty pretty popular these days, so I can I can see that working really well. Um, a blonde ale, of course. Um, I mean, it just sounds like it has a place if used in, in kind of the way that you would a piney citrusy hop that it can yeah. kind of be used in whatever you'd use Simcoe in or something, right? Definitely, yeah. I, I would think that it would it would. Um, you know, I, I would probably. Venture to guess that I would probably use it on almost every style, but wow. not not everyone. I shouldn't say that. I take that back. Uh, not every style. There's some in my mind that I wouldn't add it to, but um, yeah, I mean, there's a quite a bit that I would I would um, add to uh, red ales. I think that would work really well. Yeah, it's interesting. Celebration right now from Sierra Nevada is super popular. Everybody's drinking it, you know, during the holiday season and. Uh, every time I drink that beer, I get bitter, piney deliciousness. Oh, and yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. People <laughs> it's so apparently good. some people really don't like that beer, but I love it. And I, uh, I don't understand it, and I don't want to <laughs> ever think that um, two things. I don't want to think that it, it would be different and be bad, uh, quote unquote. And I don't want Ken Grossman to ever stop making it. Yeah, got me either. I love it so much. But it seems to me, like you, you mentioned red ale, like a red IPA would, would yeah. be just beautiful for that for tiny sure. citrusy thing. And and all, you know, almost in a way to have a little bit of that sweetness that you are talk about with, with spruce tips to balance the bitterness. I it, it just sounds really fun, you know. It sounds yeah. like it would work well. Maybe in thinking about the sweet sweetness thing again, maybe there's like this um something to do with the caramel malts that we're i'm adding and i'm usually adding in my ipas i know you typically don't add caramel malts right um to your ipas uh you, you know you you midwest folks like your kind of maltier ipa but yes. I, my most of the ipa that i've won awards with that i've actually done well in competition with do have a, a touch of you know a lighter crystal malt but it's not okay. you know I, I don't go heavy on it by any means Gotcha, um, and, and I I'll go with like a like a twenty or maybe a forty um, uh, car, uh, crystal malt, um, and I'm just wondering if how that sweetness kind of comes out. Maybe it's a combination of the malt and the spruce tips and of hops, of course, that kind of all play with each other at the same time. 
Yeah, super cool. I'm I'm excited to give it a go at some point. But like I said, I wanna I wanna do it with you know home foraged spruce tips. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. I, I will likely do a one gallon batch because I don't want to ruin anything. But I'm gonna do it. You get to do the 100% spruce tip. Brew it yourself. I will do yes. a. I'll probably steal a recipe from you actually, one that's tried and true, so I don't screw anything up. Uh, but gi- but give it a go with those home you know homegrown uh, spruce tips. I think would be really neat. I'll try to convert you into this Midwest IPA that I have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm open-minded. As long as it's not terribly hazy, right uh, you know, I, I, oh, I'll no. like it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, I have zero experience brewing with spruce tips myself, but I have had a few beers made with this unique ingredient, and I was admittedly surprised they didn't taste like I was sucking on a pine cone. So uh, it, well, you were curious to see if the point at which you use spruce tips during the brew process has a perceptible impact on an American IPA, and you designed an experiment to test it out, Steve. We're going to be getting into those results right after this break. After a long brew day, the last thing I want to do is waste more time chilling wort. I've tried so many different options, and ultimately, I settled on the super efficient immersion chillers made by Jaded Brewing. With the King Cobra and Hydra, I'm able to chill my entire batch of wort from boiling to just a few degrees above groundwater temperature in as little as six minutes. If an immersion chiller is right for your brewery, then do yourself a favor and check out all of the rad options Jaded Brewing has to offer at jadedbrewing.com and be sure to let them know Brewlosophy sent you. As every brewer knows, the best beer requires the best hops, which Yakima Valley Hops provides fresh from the source to brewers around the world, carrying everything from classics like Cascade to modern favorites like Galaxy and Mosaic, as well as other ingredients and gear, Yakima Valley Hops has it all. And don't forget to check out their new podcast, The Late Edition, where the YVH crew goes into depth on our favorite plant with industry experts. Head over to yakimavalleyhops.com now to see all they have to offer and subscribe to The Late Edition wherever it is you listen to podcasts. Family-owned Atlantic Brew Supplies, the largest homebrew shop in the Southeast. No gimmicks, no multinational corporate overlords, and no BS. They offer exclusive malts, yeast, and more from local artisans, as well as award-winning recipe kits. They also sell professional brewing gear and cask equipment from sister companies ABS Commercial and Cask Supply. Most ingredients are available by the ounce, plus Atlantic Brew Supply has an on-site calculator to help you craft your best brew. Orders are processed same day, and two-day shipping is guaranteed for East Coast customers. Get 15% off your first order using promo code. Brewpod. That's B R U P O D at AtlanticBrewSupply.com. While the idea of using spruce tips in beer initially struck me as uh, horrible, I've come to understand that they actually impart more than just pine salt flavor to beer. And seeing as some of my favorite hop varieties have a pine-like quality, it makes sense that brewers would play around with this uh, ingredient. So, Steve, you were interested to see if adding spruce tips toward the end of the boil led to a perceptibly different character than adding them during fermentation, kind of like a dry hop. And you performed a really neat experiment on the topic. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so I did a um, dual five-gallon batch of American IPA. Um, started off with seventy-six um, percent of Sugar Creek's yield pale ale malt, um, about nine and a half percent of Sugar Creek's Munich malt, and then nine and a half percent of Vienna from Sugar Creek, and then a small dosage of Caramel Twenty uh, at five percent. Nice, uh, um, mid, nice Midwest IPA grain nice bill there. Nice Midwest IPA that <laughs> uh, came out really, um, really pretty. What do you think um, of that Sugar Creek malt, Steve? I love Sugar Creek malt. Um, everything that that um, Caleb um, puts on social media, I, I, I'm a huge fanboy. Um, everything from their classics like Ye Old, uh, which is a Maris Otter, to their Vienna and Munich, which I love both. And then their smoked malts are out of this world. That's um, awesome. And just, you know, it, we, we talk about the, the um, here's this word again, there's romanticizing, you know, of hops and stuff like that. And we get geeky about like yeast and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think Sugar Creek has done a terrific job of just um, getting geeky and romanticizing this whole notion of the maltster and this you know what what he has in his hand and he can make into 
a, a, a fantastic beer. What we make or you know what we make is is in beer too. Yeah, um, it, it's just. It blows me away sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I've had the opportunity to use some of their malts as well. It's fantastic. So good stuff. Very good stuff. Uh, so yeah, I I mashed um, for an hour at 151 Fahrenheit, uh, 66 C, um, and then boiled for 60 minutes. Um, I bittered with Simcoe at 60. Uh, added a small charge of Citra. Um, which was 14 grams at 10 minutes. And then I added the spruce tips uh, in one batch um, that was 14 grams at the 10-minute mark, and then 28 grams of both Citra and Simcoe for 15-minute hop stand. Nice. Yeah, so so that, so that t- tell me about your thought process in using the... the uh, the spruce tips at the that's the first part right you added them at 10 minute mark just yes. like you would hops what what do you expect to get from spruce tips added to the boil like that um in in the boil at the 10 minute mark uh i would expect to get a lot of the pininess and a lot of the um citrus notes that we we've talked about um and i i think that it it does wonders to the beer um again kind of looking over these notes now thinking about it um i think there's another version of this beer that i did without citra um but then this this version of of this spruce tip ipa did win me awards so or an award so i guess i should just stick with the citra i guess it's good who knew (laughs) yeah who knew right yeah who knew (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would kind of treat it just like we said, just like a, a like a hop uh, at the ten minute mark, a fifteen minute mark, whatever the case may be. Cool. After chilling, the words down to sixty six F nineteen C. Um, I dried spruce um, one of the batches um, along with dry hop. I believe I dry hop this. I probably I always dry hop my IPAs. Um, and that was, you know, pretty interesting. Um, the OGs for the those beers here, one was at the the one with the spruce tips uh, at the ten minute mark um, came out at ten sixty two OG, and then the dry spruce uh, beer was ten fifty four, and. I don't really know why it came out so different. Yeah, that's a pretty wild, an eight specific gravity point difference, which, you know, brewing brewing two batches side by side, there's sometimes they're just going to be unexplainable differences in OG, whatever. But but eight specific gravity points for somebody who brews as consistently as you do, Steve, and at which you've proven with multiple other experiments, I have to believe on some level that adding spruce tips to, to the boiling wort maybe pulled some, I mean, you, you know, one of the descriptors that is often used when speaking of spruce tips is sweet, uh, that there is a sweet characteristic to them. Maybe it pulled out some level of sugar or something. I just think that's really interesting and, and a little bit more than what I would expect by, you know, natural va- variability between batches. Yeah. I, I, I ran to, um, um, facebook actually i I started posing this question after this experiment was released and started like asking questions like how did this happen and a lot of um either home brewers or professional brewers um former um uh, contributor malcolm uh, fraser was actually uh one of them who was mentioning and commenting on um this post that i had and some people who had sounded like they had more knowledge about spruce tips than I did uh, had mentioned that maybe it was something from the spruce tips that was adding to that um, OG. Yeah, I mean, who knows that 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 is the best explanation for sure. uh, you know beers that were brewed using the same exact approach. Uh, so so, but we again we cannot conclusively say that the spruce tips increased your OG. So all all we can say is, hey, look, there's this difference here, and that's kind of interesting. So pretty exactly. inter- pretty interesting first observation though i think definitely definitely it was at this point then i added imperial yeast a07 flagship uh after 24 hours of fermentation uh had started i added 14 grams of spruce tips to the batch that did not receive them in the boil 
So I, I like this setup because you're, you're using the same exact amount of spruce tips. One batch received them with 10 minutes left in the boil. The other batch gets them during the dry, I guess the dry spruce tipping. <laughs> Not necessarily yes. dry hopping. Uh, yeah. But you didn't use any other dry hop additions. So this really is going to give us some idea of what adding spruce tips, you know, in, in, into the fermenting beer uh, is going to, how that's going to impact the flavor uh, and or perceptible characteristics of that beer versus adding them at the 10 minute mark and it's the same amount 14 grams about a half ounce right and i just wanted predictability uh, i wanted something that was going to be consistent uh throughout the whole process um and it, it felt weird honestly not dry hopping um traditionally because uh i i always dry hop my ipas um so yeah this was definitely um something that i had to get used to but at the same time you know for consistency matter uh i think it had to be done that way yeah yeah i agree uh, so then these beers fermented for um, two weeks um, and final gravity on uh, the boil edition uh, batch came out at 1009 FG and the dry hop edition came out at um, 1006 FG. Uh, I mean, there is a little bit of a difference there. Um, I don't really tend to freak out about that too much, especially with the boil edition batch starting eight specific gravity points higher <laughs> than right. the, the one that yeah. received. I, you know what I'd be interested is if adding the spruce tips to the fermenting beer also extracted some level of of uh, sugar that would have actually bumped the OG up a little bit at some point. Who yeah. knows? I mean, again, it's, Who it's, knows? it's there's no way to tell, but uh, to see just a three, you know, three SG point or FG point difference there in the finishing gravity, that again, is it terribly surprising? And the fact that it kind of goes along with the starting gravities, it, that, that at least makes sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then these beers were transferred into CO2, CO2 purged kegs that were placed in my keyser uh, and were allowed to condition for a week before they're ready for evaluation. Awesome. Awesome. What I, I want to know before we get into talking about the experiment results, I want to know your impressions were and how your triangle test attempts were. And I want to hear all about what you thought about these beers before you served them to blind participants. You know, I, I really liked both batches um, and I, I thought they were both really good. Um, I believe I entered the 10 minute edition spruce tip beer into a competition, if I'm remembering correctly, and it won me first place. Um, wow. And I had a lot of people uh, who tried it, who loved it. Uh, and this had been like maybe my second or third iteration of that beer, uh, which is what the different hop bill or, you know, hop schedule. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it did pretty well. Um, so it kind of, forces me to think that yeah i should um kind of play around with the the spruce tip ipas again yeah that is that's awesome congrats first off i didn't know you won that thank award you. <laughs> yeah thank you. yeah um, it was in the middle of covid so you know like no one was really like all geeked up about like competitions and stuff yeah oh, so yeah. it's just kind of quietly uh, you know off to the side but yeah i was happy that's about rad. that yeah. Well, you, you did five triangle test attempts. We call them semi-blind because you don't know what beers are in what glasses, but you do know what the variable is. And out of those five triangle test attempts, you were able to identify the odd beer out four times, which is pretty consistent. Um, similar, both the, I'm sorry, the, the boil edition batch seemed to have more floral notes while the sp dry spruce batch uh, had more piney and citrusy notes. Uh, but like I had said earlier, uh, both were very good. Uh, I, I really liked both batches. That is so interesting that, that adding the the spruce tips with 10 minutes left in the boil seemed to impart a more floral character compared to yeah. the, what I would expect, a more piney, kind of a pine-like character from the dry spruced batch. Right. And it kind of going back to what we were saying before, maybe it would be different uh, if I try it again. I don't know. Uh, but just at that moment, it seemed rather floral to me. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Yeah. It's really interesting. Would you, we're going to talk about the real results here in a minute, but I'm so curious about your perceptions. Would you ever consider doing both, like adding spruce tips to the boil as well as during fermentation? Or Definitely. Oh, yeah, for just sure. To up that characteristic, huh? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think when when it's, even we're talking about the, um, the brew it yourself batch of just all spruce tips, um, I think that would work out phenomenally. Just throw it all in and... Uh, 
get make sure I have enough uh, enough spruce tips on hand. <laughs> See what happens. I mean, I, that's right? what I love about homebrewing. Uh, so you ended up serving this beer to 21 participants, all of whom had no idea what the variable was. Uh, out of those 21, 12 would have had to identify the unique sample in the triangle test in order us for, for us to say uh, that the, the statistics were significant at the, at the very least. Uh, and in the end, how many actually identified the odd beer out? So we had 13 actually who said that it was different. Uh, so that's a 60, let's say it's 66, I'm sorry, 62% that said that it was significant. So they were able to identify the unique sample, which seems yeah. to indicate that there is a perceptible difference there, at least among that panel of tasters. Uh, and when, when we find a significant uh, uh, finding like that, we, al- we also ask the, the people who got the, triangle test correct we ask them to just compare the two different beers and tell us which one they like more or whether they do or they don't and i thought this was interesting eight of the 13 people said that they preferred the beer where the spruce tips were added during the boil four said that they liked uh the one where the spruce tips were added during fermentation more and one person had no difference uh, or had no preference despite perceiving a difference i thought that was pretty interesting right i mean I'm, i'm not a big fan of the preference question in general but again a, a fairly decent split, but a, a majority of people who got it right are liking the one that where it was added during the boil, which ostensibly maybe they if it's floral like you perceived it, uh, that's kind of the more desired characteristic. Really interesting finding. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I do I do um, like the preference question in the sense that. Um, like, you know, what what would you want to have another glass of, basically? Yeah. Is how I'm I'm looking at it. Um, so it was interesting. Um, yeah. I I want to do more uh, with this and, and kind of see, you know, where where it takes us. Yeah. So so I don't know if you shared this already, but did you have a hard preference? You said you liked both batches, but was there one that edged out the other for you? I, I think in the sense that um, I, I like to kind of have this predictability predictability with my beer and my brewing and knowing what i've done in the past and liking the beer um i think i came into this thinking that i would like the 10 minute edition better huh. um because that's what i know that's what i've that's what i uh came up with in the beginning um and that's what i i knew um however Knowing that and knowing that I taste both beers, it, you know, they were both really good. So I I have the proof, at least for myself, yeah, uh, yeah. that both were good. That's so cool. It's it, yeah. it's still it's still so weird for me. I, I get it. Like we've t- been spent an hour talking about spruce tips, yada yada, but it's just <laughs> one of those ingredients that my brain it's like it like grates in my brain as being that way it would be tasty. But people liked it. You like it. I mean, it's cool. It's not supposed to work, right? It's supposed to be that other thing that we add to beer that some people are like, you know, turn their nose up to and and whatnot. But somehow, some way, I, I'm not smart enough to figure this out. Um, it works, and it works in a really weird way. Um, and I think it it's it's we just run with it, you know, yeah, and. Yeah. Um, maybe sometimes we we tend to overthink beers anyway. So um, just throw it in and enjoy it and let it rip and go from there. Yeah, and that's the thing. People like it, so so yeah. you keep doing what you like. I mean, that's the whole point of this hobby, right? Is 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 exactly. you brew what you like. I, I may not be the biggest fan of certain styles, but people love them, so they get to brew them, and I, I love that about this. I I definitely feel more inspired at this point to brew a spruce tips, um, and these results seem to suggest that where you use them, you know, during the brewing process matters and and has a different impact. So I think For that's sure. pretty uh, pretty interesting. We do have some reader comments I'd like to get to. So the first one comes from Corey, who says, "Do you think half?" Half an ounce of spruce tips was enough. Uh, other recipes state that you cannot use too much and have additions of a pound or more for a five-gallon batch. That's wild to me. Yeah, I would never um, want to add that much to it. Um, I can see Corey's point in the terms of uh, 14 grams, half an ounce. It's really not that much. And I've gone as high as, a, as an ounce, um, 28 grams. So I can I can see bumping up a little bit, maybe maybe even two ounces, um, fifty six grams would work, I think. Um, but I wouldn't want to go too heavy handed on it. 
but that's just me. Well, is it, I mean, we that's a thing that we kind of have to test out, right? Because I'd be, I would be, my biggest concern would be that you you start to move past the good stuff, that that sweet citrusy thing that people say that they get from spruce tips into just woody pine, you know, sappy character. But maybe right. maybe that's wrong. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe um, it, it could be, but then again, you know, we we learn so much from. Um, people talking about um you know the the threshold of hops um kind of going back to hops now and because they're so cl- the, the taste is so closely re- related right and what do we learn from that that there is a certain threshold that our palates just will not detect um so i, I don't know but if if it's as easy as going into your backyard like you're saying and picking spruce tips you know, I, I think we, we have at it. I know where to, to find mine. Um, you know where to find yours. And let's experiment. Let's have fun with it. I, I cannot wait to serve my, like, Redwood spruce tip <laughs> beer yes. my friends and not tell them what's in it. Because who knows? I mean, what if it's delicious? That That's the part that's exciting to me about this. Stuff. You know, the whole time when I started did all of this and I started – getting into spruce tip IPAs like way before I became a contributor to philosophy, but still having, you know, exposure to the, um, the podcast. Um, Timmy Tim was always in my mind when I was <laughs> thinking about the pininess of it. Right. Um, so I, I will be very, very interested in seeing what he thinks. Yeah, me too. And, and, and I will make it happen. <laughs> so next comment comes from Vince uh, F- uh, Feminella, who says, I steep, I steep freshly picked tips in boiled water overnight, then reduce uh, the strained spruce tea by boiling it into a syrup that I add late to the kettle. That's a really interesting idea. That is an interesting idea. I never, never would have thought of that. Um, I wonder. Hell, this kind of offers up another experiment possibility, right? Um, yeah, the syrup versus not no syrup and just the spruce tips themselves. So um, okay, I, this is making me think something, Steve. If he is just steeping spruce tips in boiled water overnight and not mm-hmm. adding anything else and he's able to reduce that down into a syrup, then wouldn't that suggest that there he's he's extracting some form of something that has a higher, you know, uh, 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 density at least than water. Uh, you can't boil water into a syrup. There's got to be right. something coming from it. So maybe that would, uh, you can tell that I'm trying to find an explanation for the OG difference here. Maybe yeah. that would help to explain that a little bit. I, I think we have to test it out. Um, yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, um, Vince, let, let us know like what, what you're after you hear this, if you hear this, uh, let us know what you did. Um, cause that'd be really interesting to find out more information on, but yeah, I, I like the path you're going down right now. Also let's, if you're able to make a spruce syrup, a spruce tip syrup, I should say, then you could effectively, you could add that syrup to beer in the glass and spice up your beer. I mean, I, there's a lot of opportunity there. So Vince, cool idea. Yeah. If you hear this, uh, be sure to let us know how exactly what your process is for making this syrup. He did put syrup in quotes, so okay. maybe, maybe it's not really syrupy. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, next comment comes from Sean Matt. He says, I don't know if it's got much history with beer, but I've used Douglas fur tips as well, and it's turned out fantastic. That tree has a sort of orange peel vibe to it. I've used cedar too, which is my favorite, but it contains thujone or thujone, whatever. Uh, I believe that's what's in... Um, Wormwood, which is goes to make absinthe, but uh, so one should probably take care, is what Sean Matt says. Interesting. It is interesting. Um, yeah, I I think there's a there's plenty out there that I'm sure that we can play around with and add to beer. So. Yeah, Douglas fir does not sound appealing to me in the slightest. But you know what? E- either do spruce tips, and I'm going to try right. that out. So, <laughs> I mean, I- I've had uh, a buddy of mine made a a saison that was a- he-, he somehow put cedar in it. I don't know if it was cedar, you know, uh, 
pine needles or whatever, or if it was like cedar wood, but I hated it. I thought it tasted like a closet. It, it did not okay. do it for me. So <laughs> at the very least, my, my judgment of using tree stuff in beer is uh, I do have some experience with cedar and I was not a fan. So I would imagine Douglas fir to me is like that. The, the I love the smell of it. I, I, I'm not sure I would be a big fan of it in beer, but hell, maybe it's great. And I, I, I would have to taste it first, but I have had some spruce tip beers and I've been shocked with that. They didn't taste like pine pine cones. So yeah, there you have it. I think that's about all we've got on brewing IPA with spruce tips. Steve, is there any final comments you'd like to, to make? Um, experiment more, you know, get out there and um, if you can find them on your own, that's awesome. Um, if you have to go to the internet and, and order them, I'm sure a quick Google search will, um, will do and you could find where you can um, buy some spruce tips um, you know it's just it's just a matter of experimenting and playing around with with beer uh, it's nothing so outrageous that it, it's going to um, you know turn you off to the beer I think it's it's complements everything that we we usually add to beer uh, and this come this is coming from a guy who you know likes beer that tastes like beer yeah so you know that's that's the bottom line um but yeah go out and experiment play around with it and uh if you do you know brew up a awesome spruce tip ipa uh let me know and i would love to hear about your process yeah send steve some of your spruce tip ipa give there you, you go <laughs> yeah i'm always willing to drink other people's beer man so am i so and also if if you are going to experiment with spruce tips for the first time i i only found this out when doing research for this episode uh there are a lot of recipes online so you can go find like an established recipe that has you know brew on brew father or or uh, you know, whatever calculator you use out there that has like uh, ratings on it that people have commented on, stuff like that. There are quite a few out there. So you're not going in blind. Uh, and I, I always like to kind of bounce, um, you know, bounce my my brewing ideas uh, off of others before I, I go in blind and, and create my own recipes. And so that's one way to do it. So, well, don't forget to subscribe to the Brew Lab podcast where host Cabe Job takes you into the lab with real brewing scientists to discuss the fascinating research they've done on our favorite beverage. And as always, you can read more about the experiment we discussed by clicking the link to the article on brewlosophy.com in the description of this episode. The Brewlosophy Podcast is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors as well as all of our rad listeners. We seriously could not do this without you. Cheers to everyone who has subscribed and left a review of our show. It makes a huge difference. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so. Head over to brewlosophy.com slash support to view a list of ways you can easily help us to continue producing this podcast. If you want a reward for your support, visit patreon.com slash brewlosophy. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Brewlosophy Podcast. Until then, think beer. Start off the morning with some hot tea, lemon and honey, cause it soothes my bro. Put some herb in the bowl, yeah, it's homegrown. Ain't gotta go through the middle man, no.